Today I'm gonna show you how you can emulate Hasselblad x pan if you have a roll of 35mm film and old folding 6x9 medium format camera. So the idea is very simple. If you want to use your 35mm uh, film in your folding medium format camera, you're gonna need, well, 35mm film and then you're gonna need some uh, baking paper. By the way, I don't throw away my baking paper, like never, I keep it. Uh, and if you shoot medium format, you should have it. So let me just take one of those stripes. And then of course you need a spool. Um, and you're gonna want to actually start from the end. So as you can see here, it's like frame 16 or frame 8 for folding medium, uh, fold, folding 6x9 camera. And what you also gonna need to do... So you also should keep in mind that uh, this film, I think it's actually thicker and you not gonna be able most probably measure the uh, right amount of uh, 35 millimeter film. So I would say you just start somewhere. And what I actually did, uh, so you also gonna need like uh, this paper sticky tape. So what I did to get started, um, I just put this tape here on top, I measured like right precisely, so it's it gives me the straight line. And then I put this film here. Because I want this to be right in the middle. Because the problem with my folding camera is that uh, you can see bellows on the negatives. And I didn't want to have them. Uh, otherwise I could just you know, put my film like right here, or, or right somewhere around here. And that would be maybe easier. So it could be actually easier for you. So if you measure it right right there, you know, so you put your film right at the bottom, like few millimeters from the bottom, so you can actually measure uh, your film by the taking spool in this example. But let's say if you're in a more complicated situation like me, then you just put a little bit more sticky tape and then you just start widening your film. Of course you're gonna do this in a total darkness, but since I already did... So, and this is what you do. You just wind your film and while you're winding your medium format film, your 35 millimeter film will be getting out of the canister. And I think, uh, well, I don't have a lot of film there so yeah actually I don't have it at all as you can see it was like that was it and then you're gonna wind and wind and wind this uh, until you actually hit the place where you had your baking paper uh, oh sorry not the baking paper but uh, well the start of your film so this is basically the start of your film and this is where you would like to actually so let me put this negative here to end your film. And what I did, I just kept winding it like all the way up until here, I think. And this is why I then uh, had a hard time actually, well, winding it because I ha I've i gotten a lot more film on a spool and it actually was uh, a little bit thicker. Well, in fact, a much thicker than a usual 120 film. Uh, would be and uh, that could cause uh, problems depending on the camera basically you have so if you have a camera where the compartment for your uh, film is like tight then you're gonna have a hard time like pressing your film in the camera so uh, I would not recommend you go uh, over this position and here what you're gonna do is you just gonna have a uh, like a little bit more tape and you just stick it here and you just keep winding. And this is how you actually gonna get your medium format uh, 35 millimeter roll. 
So it is a little bit messy, but I mean, uh, my role is in the camera right now already. Uh, and yes, uh, and that's pretty much it. And uh, the, let's say, the beauty of the folder like this, uh, Moscow, Ma Moskva 5, for example, is that it's not automatic, meaning that you should always peek into the window to see on which frame you are. Uh, which means that you can always control no matter of thickness of your film, for example, because if you put uh, this, you know, Frankenstein roll in your uh, TLR or some other automatic camera that measures thickness of your taken, uh, of, uh, of the film on the taken uh, spool, and this is how the camera actually measures uh, and counts the frame. With this camera you should not have any problems because this is in this camera you are the person, you are the let's say mechanism who is in control of the frame. You can do whatever you want. This is also could be let's say beneficial because you know um, you, you, you're gonna want to use like the most basic camera. Uh, because the more sophisticated camera you use, the more problem you're gonna have, I think. So, uh, because, uh, let's say, depending on the thickness of the film, the, the focal plate could be in a different situ position. And this is something that you also should take into account when shooting this film, that uh, you, sh you can get a little bit, um, let's say, a close focus. So you're gonna be focusing on something, but in fact, because your film is uh, thicker or because your film is actually can be curly and stuff, because it doesn't really, uh, you know, uh, so the, 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 the plate doesn't compress it against anything. So it's basically, it press it against the rolls, but the top and the bottom of the film, they actually free. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope you learned something new. Of course, I know that you can just go and buy a Lomography Bel Air camera with a 35 millimeter adapter back and you will gonna have actually pretty much the same uh, with a less hassle. You can just load the 35 millimeter film there and have it. But I don't want to spend 100 euros if I already have something that I can use and possibly get like creative results out of this and a little bit of surprise. So this is my, uh, let's say, attitude on approaching things like that. And then it's like a creative way uh, of photography. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I mean, I hope you enjoyed the video and I see you next time.